This thing here is my little pencil. It's a very nice little machine. Okay, it's a small one, but for what I do here in the workshop, it's a perfect size. There's one little downside on this machine. Let me show you. The distance between the blade and the vise is about 30 millimeters, a bit more than one inch. Now, for most projects, it's not a problem at all. But if I want to cut, for example, this thing here, let's uh, lift it up a bit. This stick out is so much that the whole part is singing. To cut small pieces, the problem becomes even more important because this little piece is only for 25 millimeters now in the little vise and there is way too much stick out. So what I think could be nice is to make a pair of new jowls that sticks out further away. It will almost touch the blade. I have here a very heavy piece of material. That's of course way too big but I will machine it away. Making two new jowls out of this thing. And maybe, but I have to take it apart of course, maybe move the vise closer here. Let's have a little look under the skirts of the machine. The vise is held on with six bolts. There's one I took out, it's a 8 mm. To be good, this vise should move 10 mm up. And because of the thickness of the new jowls, I would like to move it 10 mm that way. So it means that the new holes will be drilled at 10 and 10 at more or less here 45 degrees. Right here. I think it must be possible. Of course I have to redrill also this locating pin holes but that will work. Let's start first with making new jowls and after I will see if I will replace the vise or not. What I want to make is two times this part. Total length 130 millimeters and I check here on my scale it's a bit over 5 inch. None of these dimensions are critical so we can move around it. And I think it raises interesting questions. Make it in one part and when all machining is finished cut it in two or cut it in two and make two times the same part. And of course milling machine or shaper. I think if you compare shaper and milling machine I have here they're about the same size, same capacity. You cannot take enormous cuts with the shaper and you cannot take enormous cuts with the bling machine. So can be compared I think. Now the shaper in this case is not really an option because the maximum useful stroke length of it is 200 millimeter. In my part 200 60 mm. So if I want to use a shaper I have to cut it in two and make it in two times. The total reach of the milling machine is 300 mm. So in theory here it could work. But I have to count also two times the cutter. So in one part on the milling machine is not an option. I have to cut it in two. A good thing I didn't took my bandsaw machine apart yet.
To compare a bit both machines, I will do the size of the parts, the two parts, in one go. So I installed here a device, depth of cut 1 mm. We'll do the same on the milling machine. Cutting speed a bit over 20 meters a minute, which is good for this, but maybe a little bit too fast. But it will work. Of course, it will be a bit complicated to compare because in the milling machine I will use this cutter with a carbide insert. So the cutting speed will be way faster. I will use the stopwatch here on my phone for what it's worth, but I will use it on the same machines so it will be comparable if I can figure out how it works. I push run and stop watch at the same time. I have 1 minute 59 seconds and 53 so let's say 2 minutes for these two surfaces. Let's do the same on the milling machine. Start my chrono again. Zero it out. seconds and I have chips all melted here in my phone now. Two minutes, a bit more than three minutes. Of course you have to compare what can be compared. When I set up my part like this in the vise in the milling machine I can do this surface the right shoulder that I need to make and drill two holes and do these two surfaces all in one setup. And that's where we're gonna win some time, of course. On the shaper, every time I want to cut another surface, I have to change setups. And of course, drain holes on a shaper, uh, that could be a little bit challenging. But because in the hobby shop time doesn't count, all we want is having a good time while making something, I think the best choice is the machine that gives you the most satisfaction, the most fun to use. Time not important. So let's make five jobs on the shaper.
I installed here my tabletop, so I'm gonna cut shoulder out of here 50 millimeters, and the depth is not important. I think I will go down until I just not touch the jaw of this uh, vice here. Let's take a scale. About 8 millimeter. Go! Good idea. Here's a little tip for all the shaper lovers and of course also for everybody else. I wanted to talk about this a few videos ago but of course I forgot but now that I think about it it can happen sometimes that you're working on a project and the roughing cuts everything goes fine. It cuts like a charm, the clapper, clap, clap, exactly as it's supposed, supposed to clap. So everything goes well. And then you want to take a finishing pass, a very light pass. And suddenly you see that the cutting tool cuts on one stroke and then two or three, three strokes doesn't cut, take off nothing and then again it cuts one stroke, maybe two strokes and then again a few strokes doesn't cut. What's happening? I figured it out. Now don't ask me how I know that it can happen. Okay. What I did to prevent rust on the clapper box or the clapper system, I put some oil on it. The oil I use is gearbox oil, you know this big uh, sticky stuff for manual gearboxes. It's perfect for the machines. What happens is that the clapper box 
it claps, but because of the stickiness of the oil, it doesn't come back completely, which means that the cutting tool stays a bit lifted, doesn't cut. After some strokes, it decides to fall down, no problem, and then it cuts, of course, way too much. On the back stroke, it's gonna lift again, stays up. So now what I do, I take care that there's absolutely no oil, because when I push the clapper with my hand, I can feel the suction of the air here behind. This is nice, completely flat surface, and this too, and you really feel the air sucking in. Because of the stickiness of the oil, of course, it's going to be a bit hard. Since I use my spring system here to limit the movement of the clapper and limit the bouncing effect, I don't have this problem anymore. So I hope this is useful for you if one day you see that your shape is doing weird things, maybe better check this. It's also of course a very important clapper box, absolutely no play, nothing and completely free to move, no resistance at all. While the other dude there over Shaper was explaining clapper things, I took this machine apart, I finished the two jobs almost. One of them is already in place, so no problem. The other one, I still have to drill the holes somewhere in here and of course also in this part but because there's not really much meat here I think I'm gonna use these little bolts and thread the jowls one jowl and to drill these holes uh, to fix it in whatever machine I have hmm. always a solution somewhere. Find it. The jaws are in place. I reassembled the whole thing. The vise is back at the normal position. The six holes are a bit out of line. It's a bit special to make measurements. So first I would like to try it as is. Result. I wanted to cut these jowls so they are in line with the blade. But as you can see, it's barely touching. It happens, okay? Let's do a test cut. I will cut a piece in the length, see if it's square, and after that I will cut a piece of the height and see if it's square. Looks good. Mm. It's a little bit off, but almost nothing. I think for a pencil machine, good enough. Let's try the other way. This is almost perfect. 
I think we can call this success. To conclude, and this has nothing to do with the bandsaw machine. Shapers, if you have a brand new to you shaper and the last time you used the shaper was in high school, so it's a few days ago, maybe a bit longer, you don't know how it's gonna perform. You don't know the limits and you don't know your own limits yet. Here's a nice little tip. Take a piece of material. This is square. Now you take whatever. Cut it in two. Yeah. So your square. Square it up in the machine. Make a cut out. Right shoulder. So this length is equal to this length. This disappears. This length and this length same. Half the length of the total. I think this is clear. And you make this part two times. No cheating, make one, put it aside, make another one. Exactly the same. When you're finished, you can puzzle. Oof, that's completely out of, but I'm sure you got the idea. Uh, I'm gonna do it a little, little bit uh, better. Ah, it's a little bit better. The two parts has to fit together and you will immediately see if the width here and the width here is the same, if it's in line, if it's square. This is a very nice little test that can be very useful 